Today, we could be honoring Jacques Ménard for his great success in the world of finance and economics. We could be honoring the president of BMO Financial Group Quebec, the chairman of BMO Nesbitt Burns, or the past chairman of Hydro-Québec. Those are all great achievements, indeed. But today, we are paying our respect to Jacques Ménard a grand Montréalais and tireless champion for education. Jacques Ménard carries a deep belief in the transformative power of education and a deep concern in what he has called an unspoken plague that is sweeping Canada and Quebec, illiteracy, high school dropout rates, and a general complacency regarding the importance of higher education. But he's not simply worried, he's doing something about the problem. En 2008, il a publié son premier livre, Si on s'y mettait, un cri du cœur sur les gestes concrets que les baby boomers peuvent poser afin de bâtir un avenir meilleur pour les prochaines générations, notamment en encourageant et en aidant les jeunes à poursuivre leur éducation. Après la publication de son livre, M. Ménard a mis sur pied le groupe d'action sur la persévérance et la réussite scolaire qui vise particulièrement les jeunes Québécois. Il est également profondément attaché à son alma mater, l'Université Concordia, où il a assumé des rôles de premier plan, dont celui de chancelier. Nous soulignons aussi aujourd'hui la contribution de l'un des plus grands visionnaires de Montréal, Monsieur Ménard est sans contredit un fervent ambassadeur de notre communauté. Reconnu depuis maintes années pour son rôle d'ardent prometteur de la ville, il occupe la présidence du Conseil d'administration de Montréal International. À la fois leader et rassembleur, il possède un sens aigu des possibilités qui s'offrent à Montréal au 21e siècle. Thanks to Jacques, last November, Montreal had one of its biggest mobilizing days ever in Je Vois Montréal, bringing together over a thousand engaged citizens. Today, we celebrate the perseverance and vision of a man who is committed to putting into action ways to improve quality of life, whether for today's young people or for his city. C'est avec un immense plaisir que j'invite maintenant notre chancelier à conférer à M. Jacques Ménard le plus insigne honneur que l'Université McGill a le pouvoir de décerner, le doctorat en droit honoris causa. Alors, j'invite notre diplômé, le, notre plus récent diplômé, M. Jacques Ménard, à venir prononcer son allocution. M. Ménard. Chancellor Meehan, Principal and Vice Chancellor Fortier, Dean Rassieu, Monsieur le Maire, de Nicodère, mon ami. Faculty, my dear graduates, uh, and uh, all of you guests assembled here, you're, I'm very impressed to see such a, a beautiful room, so welcome to all. I'm so pleased to be here with you today. Uh, you have, in a sense, no idea uh, how humbled and I am to receive this honor and to share this great day of achievement with you, dear graduates. You know. An honoree. All honorary doctorates I've received have been very special, but for me this one is especially meaningful 
and relevant. You know, I'm a banker by profession, and this is an education faculty convocation, and from McGill to boot. So on the surface, what could possibly be the reason the university would bestow such an honor to a Bank of Montreal banker? In fact, I'll tell you, I feel that this honor has very little to do with me personally. At their best, you know, these honors are not so much about recognizing a person, they're more about recognizing a particular characteristic the presenters of the awards value the most. In other words, it's about the attributes and the actions that have made a difference in people's lives beyond the professional. The university and community are saying today, as it were, we need to promote collaboration and commitment to education across boundaries, public, private, finance, city, and beyond. Conversely, educators also have their calling to serve beyond the boundaries of their profession. And by educators, I especially mean you, dear graduates who are here today being conferred with your degree. As your minds naturally turn to your careers with excitement and some anxiety about the future, I imagine, I want to speak to you today from my heart to yours about the one meaningful choice you can make, the choice to serve. You educators did not choose your career to become wealthy. You could have chosen advanced hedge fund management for that. And I know, you know, what wealth creation really is because that's a big part of my job. But I can assure you one thing I know, no one can create more wealth in her life than a teacher. Your decision to pursue a career in education tells me that you've already made a choice to serve, to focus on generating the kind of wealth that lasts. Yesterday, you were focused on acquiring knowledge inside one of Canada's great institutions of higher learning. And today, you're beginning your journey of service to a profession and to a community. There's no greater self-fulfillment you can experience than by serving others. As a matter of fact, a few months ago, a, a Gallup survey in the US found that greater engagement in community service leads to higher levels of happiness. Now, we didn't really need a poll to tell us that because we kind of know it instinctively, don't we? There has never been a more urgent call to service than now. The opportunities have never been greater and indeed, I'll tell you, the world is thirsty for educators. Now you have a choice to serve, to make a difference in two areas, service to the community and service to your profession. And we need you in both areas. Now service is not just an ethical commitment to a cause. It's not just about occasionally volunteering either. It's more a mindset and a lifetime commitment, but in fact, it's a very meaningful one. Find your passion, whatever it might be, public policy, economic inequality, education, climate change, just pick one and make a difference. Meaningful service means going beyond boundaries, beyond your comfort zone beyond playing it safe, whether inside or outside of your career. Looking at the scale of what lies ahead, you might well ask, as I have when I was around your age, but what can I do? And that's exactly the question I've asked myself so many times when I was invited to serve over the last 45 years of my career, often with very little knowledge or expertise, initially at least, either in international development, in professional sports, in cultural institutions, in healthcare, in urban affairs, community, or in chairing a few federal or provincial task force in various public policy issues over the years. I just knew that somehow I would not be alone, at least not very long. I believed other like-minded citizens would soon join me in the journey, and they did. We all contributed from our individual strengths and expertise, resulting in a strong core to make progress. So it looked like 
small differences at the time, began to add up. This award, therefore, also reflects upon all those people that I collaborated with and who have made my contributions in so many ways and who are not here, however, today. So our small triumphs and successes that Suzanne referred to were really collective. And I want to take a second to pay heartfelt homage to them. And I tell you that I accept this award on the behalf of these folks that journeyed with me. If as a citizen, as a parent, or education professional, if you care about any or many uh, of these many issues, I repeat again, just choose one. When you do that, you will be encouraging others to join you, others who think likewise and wish to do something to make real progress on the issue you've chosen to work with. Now, change won't happen overnight, and I guess you all know that. But with passion, commitment, and perseverance, you'd be amazed at your own potential to move mountains. And this is really how service becomes change. For educators, service to education, to your profession, has never been more important. This is because the need has never been more urgent. Now, I said a few minutes ago that the world is thirsting for educators. Indeed, we need educators beyond the traditional classroom. Increasingly, expertise and great learning opportunities in teaching and scholarship reside in non-academic settings. Education is not just happening in the classroom, the college, the university, but everywhere in every sphere of society, including enterprise and in public service. This to me represents a huge opportunity for you graduates today. So I encourage you to think about education in a much broader sense than the world is coming to understand it. It means focusing on the impact of learning and not just where it's delivered. In my experience, the best organizations in the world are learning organizations. And I am convinced that as organizations grow, there will be a role for innovative educators to make their mark in these organizations. Technology is another major area that will impact the future of your profession. You know as well as I do, our society generates and consumes staggering amounts of information. Indeed, the fourth largest company in the world, Google, is built on the, on the foundation of mammoth search engines. And that's a dramatic testimony of how much we are living in a world of questions in search of answers. Now, educators have a critical role in helping us to focus on the questions that matter in the creation of a more just and caring society. That is service. The technological transformation in education is a huge evolving project. Here again, the service of educators will be to ensure that, human capital is, that the human capital required to make learning truly possible is at the heart of their contribution. We benefit from technology most when we maximize the human communication skills required to drill, to drive, to deliver, and interpret the data we, we require. That is service. The choice to serve your community, your world, your chosen profession, this is the extraordinary opportunity that is rolled out before you as you leave here this afternoon. Two years ago, I wrote a book specifically aimed at getting young people to think about choices they have to make, choices that will put them on the road to success and achievement. Albert Einstein, at a ceremony much like this one, said to a graduating class like yours, and I quote, I have no idea, no idea, what each of you will be doing with your life going forward. The only thing I know for sure is this, the happiest amongst you will be those who choose to serve." End quote. I hope you will take your youthful energy, your ideas, and your desire to serve your community and make them part of your life. Don't wait for the government or organizations or community leaders to determine what will be the next great issue and how to begin addressing it. Perish the thought. Don't wait till you know enough about the subject or obtain sufficient resources to deal with it. Don't wait till you've established yourselves comfortably in your career before you can turn your attention or energy to addressing the issue. 
you have your whole life ahead of you to forge your mark in your career. No, I urge you, dear graduates, to pledge yourselves today to serving your communities by making a real, meaningful, and enduring difference for the people you serve. The time is now. So the question I leave to you with is this. Will you answer the call to service? Now, the choice is yours. In making your choice, remember that in my book, you will be the most fulfilled when you help others. I thank you for the honor and privilege of addressing you, and congratulations to all of you. Felicitations to you. Be well.